Okay, we're going to begin. It is today's Friday, September the 4th, 2020, and this is the SRA's Practitioner Clearing Session. And I will be moderator. My name is Beth Vaughn, and I am an SRT teacher, SPR teacher and consultant. And I also serve the SRA on the Finance Committee. So I want to welcome everybody. This is organized by the SRA for our practitioners, and we have a treat, treat, really nice evening planned for you, and I think we're going to get a lot out of it. So we are recording this video, and we will make it available on our social media. Um, if you haven't muted, if everybody could mute, that'll just help with the quality of the audio. But we'll have some times to have some interaction, so not to worry. We will open up for questions. Um, I really have the honor and privilege today to speak with Kathleen Butler and everybody else here as well. And she has been a really important figure in the SRA. She's one of the few people who have been ordained as a minister, and she's a long-term teacher of SRT. She has a 24-year his history with the SRA and worked closely with Robert for over 16 years. Matter of fact, she moved to Olympia and she has so much to offer us. If you want to find out more about her, you can visit her website at www.srtworks.com. I love that, Kathleen. SRT does work, right? It is. I decided that when people would write a check or uh -huh. an appointment, it was subliminal message. SRT works. <laughs> I love it. I think of that every time I, I email you. <laughs> okay, so now I'd like to turn it over to Kathleen, who will begin our time together with an opening prayer, meditation, whatever you want to do, Kathleen. I want to turn yes. it over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. And it's a pleasure to be working with Beth as well. Um, I recommend people take classes from her, and um, she's a very good intensive skills teacher as well. So if you have an opportunity that way, um, she's much more clever with the online things than I am at present, but I will eventually get up to speed. Um, I could blame it on old age, but <laughs> no, okay. So what I wanted to start with is the meditation, because as we talk about best practices and how to improve your practice, I'm going to use a modified version of one of the prayers that's handed out in the SRT curriculum. This is a prayer that you get in the basic class and or the advanced class. And I like to just change it a little bit based on my mood or what feels right for the group. And there's some little prayers there that are so lovely that Mary Ann Detzler put together to kind of bring together these, these thoughts for centering yourself. So go ahead and if you can, um, place your feet on the floor and let's close your eyes. Get comfortable wherever you're sitting. Take a deep breath in. And release out. And take another deep breath in. And release out. Let's do that one more time. Deep breath in. Relaxing, releasing out. Take the time to feel the support of the chair the bed, whatever is underneath you. Feel the support of the chair, but also the floor or the earth. Continue to breathe in and out at a pace that feels comfortable. And notice how the energy feels around your body. How much space are you allowing yourself to have? And breathe in. And out. 
And as you continue to breathe, move your attention down to your navel, down to that area around your belly button. And as you feel your belly rise and fall with your breath, focus your attention there around your navel, feeling that belly rise and fall. And as you breathe in, imagine the gentle warmth of the sun shining on the top of your head. As you feel this warmth gently washing over you, you realize this is the presence of spirit. Draw this warmth of spirit down through the crown of your head, down through your shoulders, and down to your navel. As you breathe again, feel this gentle warmth reaching down to your hips, your knees, breathing the gentle warmth finally down through your toes. And as you breathe again, you feel this energy reaching down to the core of the earth the molten center, grounding you here. Take a few more breaths and notice how you feel. Notice any dark or cold places in your body or mind. Allow the light to flow into these places, down from spirit and up from the earth center. Do not force it. If there's any cold, dark places that do not lighten, simply send them love. And return your attention back to your navel, that power center, feeling the warmth of spirit. And affirm quietly in your mind the following prayer. I turn to spirit and ask for help. I relax and let go of any concerns. I affirm there is a divine intelligence in the universe. There is an order to my learning, growing, and healing. I do not force my plans to happen. I trust the spiritual order. I desire a blessing for everyone involved in my life. I accept divine order in my life now. As you continue to breathe, memorize how this feels for you. Take another breath, memorizing this feeling. Hold this feeling as you return your attention back to this room, back to this space, back to this time, and open your eyes when you're ready. I like these meditations, one, because sometimes people aren't raised in an environment where they were taught a particular prayer or how to meditate. 
So adding these to the SRT curriculum just helps a wider range of people with lots of variety of backgrounds. You may have a favorite prayer that you like, one that helps you get centered. One of my favorites, it's really short, is Spirit and I are one, we work as a team, nothing gets in the way. Robert taught me the one about, I had blocks of interferences this one day. Well, it's not like I only had them one day, but <laughs> this one time. And I said to him, I'm getting a lot of blocks today. He says, Kathleen, when you say Spirit and I are one and we work as a team, you should add to it and nothing gets in the way. And I'm like, I'm liking that. So I also like to add that I'm a clear neutral channel in alignment with spirit and spirit is love. So if I'm in alignment with spirit, I'm in alignment with love. And this is my way of keeping neutral. There's other ways to keep neutral, of course, but that's the intention as I sit down. To be neutral means it doesn't matter what's going on for my client. They may have an attachment to something or the p other people involved in the past lives may have attachments. But my goal is what does spirit say is in their greater good? Because sometimes we don't see something that's better. We have judgment, right? And judgment's fear-based. So when we witness what's going on, we're coming from a love center. But when we come from that judgment, we're coming from a fear center. So I like to share that because it's, it's an important part of being of your self-management. Are you judging? Because sometimes we get into self-judgment, right? Or are you just witnessing a pattern that you'd like to change? Or witnessing something that you're doing and you're like, hmm, I wonder why I'm doing that. Then you can go to the charts and ask spirit, is there a reason why I'm feeling this way? Is there a reason why I'm continuing to have this pattern? And of course, this is after the prep to work, which we're going to talk about. So, Beth, I turn it back to you for a moment. Thank you. I could have stayed in that space, you know, all the rest of the night. It was great. Uh, something familiar, yet a little bit um, different with, with your um, customization, I guess, of it. And it was beautiful. Thank you. I could just feel myself getting more relaxed, more relaxed. So that was great. Thank you. So we are going to do a clearing session, but before we get to the clearing session, I just had a few questions and just so people can get to know you a little bit. Um, I want to start off with is how did you get started with SRT? If you could share. Sure. So I, um, I found out about SRT at the early part of 1996. And um, how I found out about it is I had decided I really needed to do some healing. I needed to get some, uh, some help with clearing some issues. And I'd been to traditional counselors and I, which I think helps me in my practice today, <laughs> you know, but I, um, I went to some other modalities and my massage therapist that I was seeing at the time, who was amazing, I really enjoyed anyone that she would recommend. And she recommended someone who was doing SRT and I hadn't heard of it. Um, and I said, okay, and she gave me their information and said, you really need to contact this person for a session. I said, okay, but I didn't. And then she got back to me uh, about two, three weeks later at my next visit, did you call them? I said, no, but I will. She says, you need to call them. She's like, you just really need to connect with these people. I go, okay, okay. I was actually um, an accountant at a CPA firm. And that wasn't why I went to school. I went to school actually as a scientist. I have a degree in geology, but I worked on MBA and got into the business field due to job and economy at the time. So I, I said, yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll get a hold of them. <laughs> the third or fourth time, she's like, uh, before you leave, I think we should call them. I said, nope, I will do this. So I called them and I thought, hey, this is kind of cool. And one lady traveled. So she, there were two people I saw for different reasons with the SRT and one would come to my home. 
She'd set up a table. She had everything in her little briefcase. And she taught me to use my pendulum because that's kind of how Robert was doing it back then. It had its problems to try to set your client up with a pendulum. But I grabbed my pendulum and it just started going. And she's like, wow. And I go, yeah, yes, no, boom. And clearing. And so she gave me this little blurb that I could do to clear discarnates and things because we had issues at the CPA office. And that was one thing she was helping me with was the energy at the office. I've always been sensitive to energies. I've always seen things, all that stuff. Uh, it's actually one reason I got into science and physics was to figure out what's all this stuff that's no one's talking about that's on the planet, <laughs> you know? So that's how I found out. And I, uh, I went to see this one guy that was integrating. He would do SRT, but he also did some body work that was different than my massage therapist. And his wife taught SRT. She was the only teacher in Arizona at the time, which is where I was living. So I took a class from her and I really took off with it. I just understood it. I really was great. A friend took it with me. And this woman stopped teaching SRT soon afterwards uh, due to some other issues going on. And so uh, I ended up calling Robert uh, and taking all my other classes from Robert. I took my advanced class. I actually took the advanced class probably three times within a 12 uh, month period from him. And it went from there. But that's how I found out. And I kept blowing it off. I kept saying, no. Um, and then if, when you look at my history with the SRA, it's, it's pretty interesting because I've had such a history tied in with the Detzlers and the association. And for me to have said, yes, yeah, someday I'll look into it, makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how things work. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had no idea I would change my life, my career. I quit the CPA office uh, probably eight months after I took the basic class. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So did you um, know right away that you wanted to do this or was it just... I knew I wanted to work on myself because oh, okay. what I the reason I took the class is wasn't to become a teacher. I wanted to have a tool where I could clear blocks to being my best self every day, every week, whatever. Oh, I, that's beautiful. I, I felt that there was challenges, and I and I had some some history of trauma that I'd been working with people with, and I found SRT was amazing on helping me move beyond that kind of even literally forget about it but in a good way and so i my friend said well have you thought about working on other people i said sure because i'd say hey let me show you this thing i just learned so i naturally got into consulting and when i went to take the advanced class from robert um the first time i took the advanced class from him i'd only been doing srt not even, maybe six months, not maybe uh, a little more. And he said, I really would love to see you teaching this. I said, really? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. I hadn't thought about it, but sure. But he, I, when he would leave, I would go around helping the students <laughs> with their research. So he's like, I'd really like to see you teaching. I'm like, okay. So he convinced me and he kept convincing me. I wanted to give up on teaching many times. Uh, and I'm sure he did too. He had times when he threw things in the garbage, right? <laughs> you know, he tells you that. He will tell you that. Well, even now, if you challenge, he'll tell you that. <laughs> so, um, so, but he would convince me to keep going. He'd say, no, you really are good at this. I'm like, okay, then I'll, I'll keep going. And with restructuring, you know, I wasn't sure about wanting to teach restructuring. It was very different. And so I asked him one day, I said, do I have to teach restructuring? I enjoyed learning it. It Restructuring and SRT combined is the reason I have my son. It, it cleared cool. all the reasons about, yeah, doctor said I couldn't have children. So, wow. um, Anyway, so we, those two together cleared everything up. And so I asked him, well, do I have to learn to teach? And 
He's like, no, absolutely not. But I'd be disappointed. <laughs> so he pulled the, the, the dad kind of, uh, you know, guilt thing. So, but I'm really glad he convinced me too. He told me he really liked teaching it more than SRT. And I thought that's really strange, but I can see what he meant. It is fun. I really enjoy it. So, um, I'm sorry, I digress a little bit, but no, go fine. ahead. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So another thing that um, I wanted to ask you about is, and we have many international people on the call, is that you've had the opportunity to travel the world um, teaching SRT. So I'm just curious, what do you enjoy about doing this work in other countries? And any other comments around that? Um, well, the one thing about if I take teaching kind of out of it and just say, you know, meeting the communities worldwide, just meeting the people and the communities is delightful. Um, I mean, there's always challenges, I would say there's always, but there can be challenges with travel because there's language barriers sometimes and there's currency and cell phone challenges <laughs> sometimes. However, the groups are amazing and you can kind of get the vibe from them. So what I have learned from international communities is sometimes they're more dedicated to understanding it than some of the English speaking community because they don't have some of the books and things in their language. So whatever we translate, whether it be the Ascension or, an, or some kind of newsletter or handouts in class, they really know, they really read them and they study them and they ask questions. And I find that they are, are for the most part really dedicated to being a student of SRT and they're so uh, gracious um, and sharing with me their joy of the work and and I think, you know, it reminds me that love is a universal language and that spirit can overcome all the blocks. It amazes me how many people I can communicate with, with even when there's language challenges. I usually have an interpreter, so you have to learn that concept of working with an interpreter when you teach. It takes some patience. You have to chop things up and move a little slower, as you may know, Beth. Mm -hmm. so and you can't tell jokes that's the one thing <laughs> telling jokes don't go over because it's not the same culture right <laughs> but some of it does so we have a little more serious conversation sometimes because we because the, of the language and the time that they want to ask questions and from teaching uh, for me to be sure I have everything in English so that I can follow, but I like to have it in both languages so I can know where they are on the page as well if they have questions. Great. That's it. And it's wonderful to see other countries and to see just the joy and how we are all the same. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is how, how we're the same. We're, there's people that love their families, that love SRT, that are just everywhere on the planet. It's wonderful to see all the love that's out there. And yeah. so many people wanting to help. Yes, people wanting to help mm -hmm. and asking for help, trusting us to help them as well with something. It's, um, it's been a beautiful experience. I take my son sometimes when I travel. So when he was 14, 15, I think he'd been to seven different countries. Wow. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So he a good experience. He, it is an excellent experience because we all want to be global citizens, right? Not just mm -hmm. a citizen of the U.S. or of Mexico or Colombia. We want to be cit global citizens because we're all one big family. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So I have a question for the group before I ask you this next question, then we'll get to our clearing process really soon. 
Um, just out of curiosity, how many people, if you're not a consultant yet, want to be a consultant or want to be a teacher? If you could put in the chat, um, yes, I want to be a teacher. Yes, I want to be a consultant. I'm, I'm curious what we have. Yes, I want to be a consultant. Great. Yay. Okay. Yay. Um, you know, recently the certification of forms have changed and you can find them on the spiritualresponse.org website. And I believe they probably have them in Spanish. I know they have them in English. Um, but Spanish has such a large number of people in that community that it's normally right behind the English versions as far as getting prepared and ready. So my next question to you is what advice would you give to somebody um, that wants to be a consultant or even wants to become a teacher? Um, I know that's a big question, but what, what would you say to them? Well, you know, I think uh, what I learned kind of the hard way, um, and Robert helped me get an awareness with this, is one day he said to me, Kathleen, don't assume that you're the problem. <laughs> So that made me look at my energy management differently. Am I blocking? Am I just having problems because I'm not good enough? No, maybe the client's blocking me. Maybe their high self isn't working with my high self. Maybe the program itself has so much energy attached to it, it's blocking us to moving forward. People forget about that as well. I had an experience where the program was blocking me to um, to being able to work on it. The energy of it was so intense, which doesn't happen very often, but it has happened. So if you feel like something's off, don't ignore that. Even if you get the answer that everything's cleared, then go to chart one and ask, why am I feeling that weird energy? Why does it feel like things aren't cleared? And you say they are, but why does it feel like it's not? It's important to address the feelings because your feelings are never wrong. They're always truth. And they're always positive. Now you can have negative thoughts that, in, that attach to feelings and that can get into what we call negative emotions. But your feelings, use them as a tool. Do you feel like everything's cleared? great. Why did, you know, and, and then like, if I get everything's clear and it feels like everything's clear and, and done, then I go with that. Now, not everyone feels energy. So you can just always ask, okay, you're telling me it's clear and everything's clear at hundred percent. Are you sure? Just throw in an extra question, right? Are you sure? I just want you to go back, check all the nooks and crannies. When I do a mop-up, I ask for a, a forever infinite guarantee that everything hidden, buried, covered up, and saved has been cleared. So with anyone starting a business, um, SRT business, or planning one in the future, or just working on yourself, which is so important. Working on yourself is, you're the most important client you have. If something fills off, don't ignore it. There you go. My That's advice. great advice. <laughs> great advice. Your head, your head will tell you that you're just, maybe it is self-doubt, but find out if it is, right? Yes. Well, one of the great things about this, these calls, and I'm sure there's going to be more to come, is a process that teachers have to share with the group and the recording will be on social media so we can even go back to it and listen to it and, and share with your friends as well. But you have a process that you want to go through now, right? Yeah, I usually do it at the beginning when I meet with a group. For example, okay. I have a monthly SRT meeting I do with my students or anyone else who's interested in attending. You just have to have completed the basic class, which all of you have done that plus more. Um, so what I do when I sit down to work with a group is you know how we prep to work? Don't ever, and that's the other thing, like advice, don't ever underestimate the power of a prep to work. The prep to work is vital to your session. Don't try to cut things out. 
And when I say that, I'm talking about the prep to work that the SRA presents. So I'm gonna go through a prep to work. You won't see me necessarily because I don't have those extra cameras to, to show you things, but I'll say it so you'll know where I'm going. So I'm gonna do this with a group though, and you're gonna notice that the questions are the same as if I'm working on an individual. Now, when you work on a group, you're not clearing individual programs for everybody. You're simply clearing so that you're working together more effectively as a group. So a family group, you go visit your parents or your siblings or extended family, and you notice that it doesn't feel good or there's some issues. It may not be you, and it may not be them necessarily, but it may be that the family has a program. The family group has an issue. So when you guys get together as a group, this can be true for coworkers. So um, you could clear the coworkers. So I'm gonna clear us as a group in this way. I'm just gonna go through, and we've already done our prayer, we've centered ourselves, and how long will it take to prep us as a group? Zero hours. How long will it take to prep all of our high selves as a group? Zero. That means I can do my prep to work. So I have my chart one, I'm holding my pendulum over my chart one, and I'm asking for that prep to work. Now I know they're working to reword the prep to work to be more user friendly. And this is one thing to keep in mind. Those other questions are verification questions. All of those items are being done when you ask for a prep to work. So then you're gonna hear me go back and just say, well, now can you verify that you did this and you did that? So I just tweak the words a little bit, but I don't skip the questions. All right, so they're still prepping us as a group. Going on for a bit, that's not unusual. We've never been prepped as a group before. If your prep to work takes more than five minutes, let's say you're an advanced student or better, you know, you've been working with this for a while. If it takes more than five minutes, I would definitely check for blocks and interferences of any kind. Why is it taking so long? Okay, they're what, finishing up? I get a yes response when they're done. So I'm gonna ask, do we have a thorough prep to work? Yeah, well, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna ask this question about the high self. Well, what's the lowest level of consciousness of anybody's high self committee? See how I'm modifying those questions? I get at the highest level on chart three, so that's good. What's the lowest level of consciousness of anyone's guardian angels? Now those two committees together, high self, guardian angels, they make up your spiritual committees. I do get guardian angels are not all at the highest level on chart three, so I'm going to ask for that to be, for those few that aren't, to be cleared to the highest level on chart three. If someone needs their guardian angels replaced, I just tell high self, if you need to replace them, go ahead and do that. We all get to a space in our life where we might need a change in our committees because we need someone that's suited to whatever it is we're doing now, as opposed to what we did in the past. I'm not five anymore, so maybe I need someone who knows how to deal with an adult life, right? Okay. Although I had really good ones that when I was five, I'm sure of it. Okay, so they're working on the guardian angels. Now, going back to chart three, page one or page two, page two, what's the lowest level of consciousness of any, anyone in the group? They're guardian angels. Okay, highest level on chart three. So then I like to ask, can you give me a four, um, is everyone's high self an aspect of spirit? Yeah, okay. What percent? See, I can always verify it. Okay, 100%. Can you give me a forever infinite guarantee? Robert would use that word not all the time, but periodically he might go and use it for a long time and then stop and then go back to it. I find myself doing the same and I'm on this kick about <laughs> forever infinite guarantee. So I ask, can you give, Spirit, can you give us a forever infinite guarantee that all blocks and interferences have been cleared for us as a group? Yes. 
can you give me a forever infinite guarantee that everyone's 13 bodies are cleared, original 13 bodies are cleared of negative programs as a group? Yes. Does everyone have a shield of protection up? No. When you're born, you come into this world with a shield of protection. Your high self, part of their job is to, is to maintain that shield of protection. However, your programming might pull it down. They can't override your programming and say, oh, Kathleen doesn't want that shield up. I'm going to just force it up anyway. No, they're going to have to accommodate whatever your programming is. So how many people on the call don't, uh, are having issues with their shield of protection? One digit, how many? Two. Okay, so I'm just asking for all of the um, reasons that their shields aren't staying up to be cleared. If your shield isn't staying up, of course that leads to blocks and interferences, and it could be a wide range of blocks and interferences. There we go. Now, is everyone as a group, are all of our shields up? Yeah. Okay. And are they going to stay up? See, I can always ask that. Are they going to stay up? Are you sure? See, I could, <laughs> I could add that too if I wanted. And why would I add that? If something fell off, maybe, a little bit. So let me see. There's really nothing else in the pre... Oh, uh, I could check for extra souls, but I'm checking us as a group. So is there a program to clear for us as a group? Yes. Have you ever had that experience where when you're with a group, you have trouble getting correct information or you get interference that you don't normally get when you're by yourself? This could be because you've been harmed by groups. That's one thing I had to overcome was my fear of groups to be a teacher. Because at first I'm like, oh, sure, Robert, let's do that. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I think I have this thing with groups. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to ask why, or not why, but um, we have a program to clear as a group. On what chart would I find it? Chart five. So this is us as a group, not as individuals. So I don't have this program as Kathleen, but as this group today, this group has this program. And it is called a negative motivation of anxiety. Anytime negative motivation comes up, it means that that motivation is what motivates you. So that means as a group, we have to feel anxious before we're motivated. So it's fear-based, as you can tell. If you ever get negative motivation and then your pendulum goes in a straight line at the bottom or it goes in a circle, this can mean that there, uh, it's negative motivations at spirit level. Those, of course, don't require research of any kind because they're before incarnation. Okay, so clearing that up. Is there another program to clear for us as a group? Yes. Left of center, meaning the left side of chart one. What chart would I find it on? Chart three. I love chart three. Chart three represents everything that, not just what your soul has planned, but the entire spiritual process of a human soul, the creation of the human soul, the creation of the universe, and all those supportive elements that go into the universe, or such as who made the animals, who made the planets, you know, all of this is really cool stuff. So where on chart three is this program for us? It's at Father of Understanding, they're pointing to that, and I get no. Is it second astral body? Yeah. Is it the subconscious mind? No. Is it anything else on that level? So universal God consciousness going sideways. That's where we're looking. Second astral body. And do I need to know more information? On chart three, if you ever get that you need more information, it's basically chart 6A. Okay, so what is it? Betrayal. Betrayed by God. So it went to betrayal and then hate of God. The word hate means I've been harmed by. I've been harmed by God. Well, let's take the word God and what does that mean? It means good. So I've been betrayed by the good in my life. So when things are going well, then maybe something bad happens. 
So this can also mean in past lives you were harmed for following your spiritual path and it's showing up as a betrayal from God. So as a group, we're saying, hey, let's clear that up so that we can feel more at ease about pursuing our spiritual self, our spiritual enlightenment, being more authentic with who we are, not afraid to be who we are. And they're working on that. Is there another program to clear for us as a group? No. What's the next thing? Mop up. Is there anything else to clear for us as a group? No, and it automatically went into a mop up. So the mop up's gonna be clearing us as a group. So working on the mop up, finishing that up. Can you give me a forever infinite guarantee the mop up's complete? Yes, do all of our souls agree that we're cleared as a group? Yes. Do all of our high selves agree that we're cleared as a group? Yes. Is there anything hidden, buried, covered up, or saved for us as a group? No. Okay. I could ask, is there any dormant programs as a group? No. Any active ones still going as a group? No. Inner child? Hmm. As a group, we don't have an inner child, so I don't do that one. Is there anything else we need to know? Love that question. Anything else we need to know? Yeah, chart five. Zealous desire. Sometimes as we go back to who, you know, advice on creating a practice, some people who are fresh working on this and even long-term people, you get so excited about the work, about the healing work. When your enthusiasm gets out of balance, that's what we call zealous desire. It can look like an obsessive compulsive or being fanatic about something. No, really, you need to clear this, you know. Keep in mind SRT has healing. I mean, it has the clearing, but then there's also applying healing. So it's about balancing our enthusiasm. So if, new, if consultants get overly excited, they want to help so much that they get out of balance with their enthusiasm, this sometimes can create openings and sometimes people pick up separates because of it. I haven't seen anything too recent about that, but it used to be a challenge with new consultants. So just sharing that with you as we're bringing the, all that together. Spirit says there's nothing else we need to know and we're cleared as a group. Thank you, Beth. That was wonderful. Um, <clears throat> You know, we are almost at the top of the hour, but I, I think we have some time for questions. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you good with that, Kathleen? Yes, I'm good with questions. Okay. So I would love for people to unmute themselves or if they could raise their hand. If you know how to do that, let's see, raise your hand. Or if you um, want to type it in the chat box, um, yes. I'll be looking at that as well. Yeah, but feel free if you want to ask, just let us know so we can make sure you're unmuted. Because if we unmute everybody all at one time, it might be a little bit much. So, um, hi, Maria. Oh, hi. Hi, do you have a question? Uh, no. <laughs> but, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, nice to greet you all. <laughs> I, I just uh, did the level first, uh, level one, like a couple of weeks ago with Veronica in Chile. And so I'm, I'm very new at all of this. Uh, I'm just getting familiar with the terms and, um, and the processes. I'm still at my very first steps. So, and it was um, an online workshop. So, I had a real uh, trouble trying to be concentrated uh, on, by learning by the computer. Oh. <laughs> and so the process has been slower than I think it would have been in presence, like okay. normal <laughs> conditions, you know? So, uh, but Veronica is so nice, such a good teacher. Yeah. And we have all the videos and we can see them. So I am uh, reviewing all of the videos over and over. <laughs> so I'm in that, that uh, state of learning. Okay. So well, that's I great. Don't have a question. I'm like a little sponge trying so, to absorb <laughs> everything. And yeah. 
<laughs> uh, I still cannot even think of being a consultant because everything is so new to me and I really feel I need to get familiar with the energy and to I like to be flowing easily with the technique before I could offer it to other people. And of course, so, that's, why, that's why we don't let people become consultants straight away. Practice, see if you like it. A year from now, are you still liking it? You know, yeah. Yes. So see how it goes. And um, you bring up an excellent thing, and that is retaking classes. Wonderful thing. Re reread the material, retake a class. It's a great way to learn. I loved that I retook so many classes. Yeah. Anyone else have questions? Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, well, right now I'm like practicing a lot and with a friend, I'm like supporting their ter um, her therapies uh, by making me um, supporting with the group. But uh, sometimes uh, I can notice that uh, the pendulums start to get crazy. And that's the moment when I realized that I have like interferences or something like that. And and I still question in myself why happens that because I get like a little frustrated when the interferences like uh, can attack me or, or or I perceive that like an attack and uh, because I say no you you are not allowed to move my pendulous so so, so I I don't know how well, to like protect myself for that well keep in mind you may not be the source of the block. It could be your client or your client's high self or mm -hmm. the energy. So what I do, if I get blocked in the middle, I, I, absolutely, I ask for blocks and interferences to be cleared. If it continues, and I'm gonna do this right now, is there a reason why you're getting the blocks and interferences? Yes, chart five, okay? It is a control, oops, wrong chart. Hold on, get to the right one. It's escapism, negative motivation of escapism. What percent of that is you? Zero. What percent is your high self? Zero. What percent is your client? 90%. How about their high self? Zero. So their program, when you get to a certain point, at least the last time you worked with them, and I'm asking for the program to be cleared, that for some reason that program didn't come up, yet to work on and it's causing blocks and interferences so you can always go back and trust spirit to show you why am i having these blocks why are we getting blocked just yesterday i was working on a client and i said wait a moment i need to go and ask why am i being blocked to working on you she goes okay <laughs> so i went to chart one and i asked why am i being blocked to working on her and it was a conscious control on her part, not mine, but her part. So taking the moment to identify, I'm not going to ignore it's happening and you didn't either, and then moving forward. So um, it's okay to let the client know you have to work on clearing something, that there's something coming up for them. You just say, hey, you know what? There's something coming up for you. It's kind of causing some interference. Let's work on that and then we'll move on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So you were clear. See, that's the point. You were clear. Something coming from the client. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, anyone else have questions? Okay. I take the silence as a job well, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, no, you can always listen to this. And if English isn't your first language, it's a beautiful opportunity to have it recorded so that you can go back and listen to um, and absorb it in a different way. Right. Yeah. There's layers that you can get from, you know, even taking a class or, or a, a session like this. Um, even, before if we, we, even if, even for me, things taught in English, I want, I want to redo them. <laughs> yeah. redo them. Does it matter? Right. Yeah. It's okay. amazing what you get whenever you go through a class another time. 
Mm-hmm. And I've been different place. Well, I was going to say, and you know, I've been teaching for so long. I've seen a lot of things. So practice is how you learn. You just keep doing it and then you learn more ways to get rid of the challenges. You're like, oh, that happened last year. I know what to do now. Yeah, you just learn it. And Beth, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. Um, Before I end this, is there one final thing you would like everyone to know? Any kind of last minute thoughts or? It's important. Oh, yeah. So when we think about, I mean, other than being your authentic self, everyone has their way of doing SRT. And I don't mean like those that might do it in a way that they, um, they water down, you know, they make it less effective. I'm talking about how you see the world, uh, what as experiences you've had that comes to play with your work. Um, I have certain experiences that I might draw a certain client to me, just as you might. But when you think about what is SRT, Robert once told me this, which I found very helpful. SRT is the questioning method. SRT are the charts and the questioning method. The pendulum is not SRT. That's a tool you use in SRT. Channeling is not SRT. That's a tool that you use in SRT. But SRT itself, spiritual response therapy or technique, is about what is your spiritual response. So that goes back to your energy management. What's your response? But it's also about the questions, learning to ask good questions, to be clear in your questions. Don't ask too many. One and then another. Be concise. Keep them short. It always helps. And the charts, that's what SRT is. And then the others are aspects that we use in that method or that system, actually. It's a system. Okay. That was great. <laughs> Thanks. You know, a spiritual response. It, that's, that like cleared stuff up for me for some reason. It, yeah, we for, call it SRT so often we forget. It's about spiritual response. Yes, mm-hmm. very much. So in closing, I just would like to remind everybody about the consultant line. Um, For anybody wanting to call and maybe get a clearing, you can call. It's $2 a minute. 1-800-4-SRT-WAY is in the U.S. If you go to the website, spiritualresponse.com, you can find out more information for those of you outside the U.S., You know, whenever we start, whenever I started SRT, it was really Robert answering the phone. And then he's like, you know, I'm going to train some people. And so we had like several people that he trained and it's, and it was a great way where if you were stuck as a consultant and maybe, you know, somebody that I didn't know could, could kind of help me get unstuck or there's something going on it was a way for us to be able to have a resource. So that's how I look at it. Um, So if ever you need that little extra um, help, you know, they're there for you. And we should have another meeting like this real soon. I'm not sure exactly when, but I would love to get some feedback from you. Did you, um, how did you like this format? Thumbs up. Um, some comments in the chat or if you want to unmute and share anything is this something you'd like to see okay good we got thumbs up Vanessa thank you hey, um, thank you. Good. big thumbs <laughs> Isabel I, I, I believe, thank you I believe um, that there's one scheduled toward the end of September but I'm not positive about that but I that we've talked about it okay and I'll uh, I'm sure there'll be some new soon Mm-hmm. Great. So it will be on a Friday and it will be at 5 p.m. Right. Okay. Wonderful. So keep posted or check your Facebook out. Um, look at Friday nights and see what's going on. I would love to see more of you on the, are you on the call again and invite friends and 
so appreciative, Kathleen, of you coming and sharing your wisdom with us. Wasn't she great, everybody? Yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, class. Yeah. All right. I enjoyed this. I don't always enjoy meetings, but I had a good <laughs> time. Uh, it was great. You're a great audience. You made me feel at ease. I appreciate oh. that. That's good. Yes. We all came together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Great. Okay, everyone. Well, have a wonderful weekend in the U.S. It's a holiday. Yay. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. It's great to Bye. see you, everybody. Hi, Nicholas.